I am a storage and sand consultant. Um, primarily, my job is uh, post-sale deployment assistance with customers. So, if a customer purchases um, uh, some new storage, I might be involved with helping to initially configure that storage and do data migrations uh, from old storage to new, uh, sand migrations and deployments are a large part of what I do. So, um, my talk is going to be based more from uh, uh, like a storage admin, just ways you might hack some some scripting and stuff. It's it's really rough and uh, and it's kind of just how I work. And um, I've tried to develop some of my own tools along the way here to make my my repetitive tasks easier. So I just want to start with kind of where this came from. So I, I've seen a lot of storage admins have their own um, worksheets that have make massive use of uh, formulas. This one even uses macros uh, VBA scripting under the covers. And, and it works really well. I mean, what this is is for uh, a DS8000 PPRC, uh, you know, configuration. So I can put volumes in here and ra volume ranges, and then I have uh, a storage matrix over here of what my source and target storage is, and all the ports that I'm using to to connect those together. And and so then when I when I create the scripts for this, it kicks out just the text file. And and gives me all the commands to make my my uh, paths and make the relationships and 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 it works really really well. Uh, the problem with it as a consultant is I work with a lot of different customers, so I'm always putting maintaining different versions of this spreadsheet for for the customers um, because you know I need different volume ranges and stuff for each customer. And then the, the problem comes up is if I want to make an update to the script or the tool to make it a little more efficient, then I go into the to the macros under the covers and I I change them and uh, improve it. And then I then I look back and I have ten different customers with an older version of this. And because the formulas and everything are built right into the worksheet, it's not. It, I just that that's really hard to go back and then update the other customers' versions. So then I end up having to copy and paste data in and out. So that what I really wanted to do was um, move the code out of the workbook and put it into something that's external from the workbook. Um, I also have an example here of, uh, of a zoning um, workbook here that I that I use, and I I just have a kind of a control panel that I built here, and then uh, you know I create my aliases for, for Fabric A here, and then a, a, or zones for Fabric A, and then the same for Fabric B. I have aliases and zones. And then when I when I kick this one off, it creates um, script files right here for for you know my alias and zones for each fabric. So I have fabric A zoning and fabric B zoning. I can I can come over here and I can toggle this to to Cisco. And then uh, you know if I were to put my my V sands in here, uh, twelve and thirteen, kick that off. It's going to uh, kick out the script files and it's going to reload these here and and so now these are these are Cisco zoning. So it's it's really nice for me because I might work with a brocade customer one day and Cisco with the next uh, Cisco the next day, and and that's really nice. So these tools, you know, they work. It's just getting to the point of extrapolating that um, into something that's um, not tied to the workbook. So I've. I've been teaching myself Python. Um, I'm not a, a you know Python expert by any means. It's been uh, YouTube videos and, and learning and talking to people about it and stuff. So it's really just been a growing skill over over time. And so th those two workbooks I have, they work. I'm not trying to replace those immediately here. So what I what I am doing is um, making a tool for IBM Flash System Storage. It's a, it's a product that we sell, um, and it's based on SVC technology and, and V7000. If you've ever heard of that, that's that's built into that line. So what I did here is, as I just have, it's more of a simple workbook with different tabs here. So I have hosts, and then I have volumes, and then um, my fiber channel ports. I actually export this from the command line, and I get you know as a CSV, and I just import this in here so that I get all of my fiber channel ports. And then I define my sand fabrics here and what where my storage ports are on the sand fabric. And and then what I've I've done in Python, then I have the code over here in VS Code, is um I have a I have a tool that will go out and actually um here I can show you my config file. 
So I can I can define you know my system name, the source workbook here, uh, the brocade, the sand vendor if it's brocade or, or Cisco because this will actually create the zoning based on the hosts that I put into the tool. Uh, if it's Cisco, I need my vSANs. Here's the names of my zone sets. Um, if the zone set is already existing for brocade, I just you know I I, I won't create a new one. And uh, if I'm using device aliases or FC aliases. And so there's a bunch of different variables here. This is how the ports are, are grouped together for zoning. I won't go into the detail on that, but um, then the, when, I when I run the tool, I'll show you here. It's just as, as easy as uh, doing a Python slash system tool.py. And it's just going to run and, and create these, these three files. And if I jump back over to the code here, um, I have my cut my data directory here. My customer name is my as our own company. I just uh, put that in here and then I have an output folder. So, um, the output folder here, I, you can see the zoning commands. Uh, I had brocade listed in the config file. So these are all formatted for brocade. If I went back and change it to Cisco, it would make these, uh, these same commands for, for Cisco. So it's actually going to go out and create the aliases for all the hosts that I've, I defined on that on that host tab. And then it'll create the storage aliases um, based on um, a storage tab or the fiber channel port tab in there. And then and then it'll actually go and zone the host to the storage. Uh, it's set up right now for single initiator, single target. I have plans to make some more options there for uh, possibly smart zoning and uh, single initiator, multiple target. And so this, this is really nice because um, it just kind of does all the thinking for me. All I have to do is go in here and, and you know, set up what I want my host to be, and I import the fiber channel ports from the command line. So it should be a quick turnaround here to uh, to get zoning for a storage system into commands that I can just then send to my customers and have them have them run. Uh, I could go in there and tweak the uh, you know the format of the alias and stuff if I wanted to if it didn't conform to what the customer was using. And then um, this this here is some of the commands that I would use to actually make the host on the storage system. So this is a make host command, uh, the name of the host, and then the fiber channel ports that worldwide port name is for that host. And then I'll make the volumes here with uh, sizes and the, the units, and and it'll actually uh, um, then map those volumes to either a host or a cluster um, based on what I have in, in my workbook. All right. Here on my volumes tab, I, I have, you know, the volume name Thor starting at volume one, five, five of those. It's going to be 70 gigabytes and it's mapped to the whole store. <clears throat> then the vCenter here, I have three volumes of four terabytes because these are for data stores and it's mapped to the cluster vCenter. Um, when I created my hosts, I have uh, the host definitions here. And then if, if, if there is a cluster for it, I just put it in here. And if, if the cluster is blank, then it, it's not going to be mapping to a cluster. So that's um, that's kind of how I've been starting to replace some of my old uh, spreadsheets that were really complex. Uh, I have a few minutes here. I wanted to show uh, some of my discovery tools that I've created. Um, for DS8000, I, I have a uh, DSCLI script that I can send to a customer and they, they can run this in DSCLI and then they get an out, uh, output file from that script and they send it to me and it looks like this. So you can see it actually has IO ports in it. Um, it has, you know, the DDMs. It has all sorts of information about the system. And if anyone's familiar with DS8000, there used to be a tool called DS8Q tool. that was really nice in collecting some of this information, but um, it's, not, it's not around anymore. Um, so I, I built this to replace it and this format, you know, this is okay to, to find information, but I wanted it to be in a spreadsheet. Um, so I have a tool here that I can run. And I just put the output of that, uh, of that uh, DSLI output, I put it into my uh, input folder here for my customer. So I just take that, that file that I was showing you, the out output file, and I put it into this DSAK input. And it's going to generate a spreadsheet and it's going to put it in the output folder here when I when I run it. So Python, yes, eight. 
query all. And so it's going to run a run a Python script that'll go out to that input folder. It'll find the uh, the source file, and then it's going to build an Excel workbook with tables on every tab for the uh, various components that it's finding in there. So this is pretty dynamic. If I decide to collect more more commands, um, it'll just build more tables based on whatever commands I have. And then when I uh, I go to my output folder here. You actually see a, a spreadsheet or a workbook here, actually. Um, and when I open that up, give it a minute here to open. Come on, Excel, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So then uh, it actually has a table of contents um, with, with dynamic links to all the tabs down on the bottom. Um, so if I wanted to you know, look at the show SI command, uh, I can jump right to that. I can jump back to the table of contents. Uh, so Python did all this. I, you know, I, I, I wrote this with modules that can interface right with Excel. And you can do dynamic stuff like this and create a really functional workbook using Python as as the uh, the tool to do this, so these are full tables with filters on them, uh, you know that are that are filterable, and you know you can fully functional workbook that's that's really nice. And then I could turn around and send this back to my customer and say, here's you know for your records, uh, we have this. Um, the the last thing is I did the same thing for the IBM Flash system, but but what I did differently here is. Um, IBM has an XML file that you can actually just download right from from inside the, the the Flash system. So if I if I search for cron, it's run in a cron tab every day, and it's an XML file of, that backs up the entire config. And I can download that and save it. And so I'd likewise just take that and I put it into um, my input folder for my Flash system input. And I can I have two of them in here, and actually the script will will do every single file that I have in my input folder. Um, so if I if I have a customer that sends me a whole bunch of different configs, I can put them all in here, and then I run uh, my Flash System Query All tool. Oops. And then that will uh, just take that XML file, so I don't even have to send any commands to the customer to have them uh, generate that. And it'll make basically the, the same kind of uh, workbook based on that XML file right from the system. So I can, I can get a nice snapshot of what the config looks like just by uh, sending some simple instructions on how to download that, that XML file. So now you can see I, I have this flash system query all here for, uh, Done. Yep. So I, if I were to open up RSVC from our lab, um, same kind of thing. So I've got I put the code level and cluster IP up here, and then I've got the same uh, you know way to, to look at stuff in right here. So here's all the volumes that exist on there, fully filterable again. So 